One of my growing passions is old computer hardware. Getting Linux running on a 386 and Unix running on something older than that are my ultimate goals at the moment. Sadly, my 386 board that boots has a real potato for a BIOS. It won't boot anything I've tried so far, earning it this place of shame on the wall. I'm also building this monster. I got this sucker to power on just once. Right after this picture was taken, I reset to factory settings. I don't know why I did this, as the board was likely already as reset as it needed to be by being powered off for countless years. This is the screen I'm stuck at now. I've tried to replace all the crazy old RAM, and I've even tried different arrangements of RAM, but without any luck. I have a feeling that I've nuked this BIOS and it will need to be reflashed. Trouble is, I don't have a chip flasher, and even if I did, I don't know if I could find a BIOS for this really old board. My 286 Luggable has a decent BIOS for its age. The most I've managed to get this to do is to print E repetitively until I powered down the system. This is when I attempted to boot a copy of Xenix. Looking up in the manual, this means error booting. Not super helpful. I do plan to test out a bunch of other OS's and to retry a few OS's over a 5.2 inch floppy drive, just to see if that helps booting anything. I also have a number of old motherboards. This one powers on and has a bunch of built-in ethernet. Cool. I've also picked up a few of these guys. So far, no signs of life. Any advice on getting OS's running on these old computers is welcome. This beauty is my favorite at the moment. It has a 100 MHz Pentium processor. The BIOS seems to like booting floppies, and even that is pretty picky. The best way I've found to boot this machine is with this really epic boot floppy. This floppy boots and lets you select a number of tools, one of which allows you to start up CDs. Very handy. The best OS I have found so far is called Basic Linux. It takes just two floppies to boot and install. The first image gets DD directly to the floppy. This is a really sensitive process. Make sure to let the floppy indication light turn off after you've run and see the sync command return. If even a bit is out of place, this won't boot. The other file is a bit more challenging to write in my opinion. You need to format a floppy by running this command. I find it kind of odd that you don't have to put down a partition table first. Then mount the floppy and copy over the compressed archive. With the install media made, booting the first disk starts up Lilo and eventually asks for the second floppy. Once fully booted, you'll have access to a fully featured shell. This OS has no issue seeing my hard drive, which means I can install it. The process to install is more or less use fdisk to lay down a partition table and add at least one partition. Next, format with an ext2 file system and mount it under HD. It will ask you to swap to floppy disk 1 after it's completed copying disk 2. With that done, we can reboot to our new install of basic Linux. I've tested two different network cards, one ISA and the other PCI, and neither of them show up, but getting this computer online is really not needed for its primary purpose. Using this computer, I can take a 1.2 megabyte floppy image held on a bigger 1.44 megabyte floppy and DD that directly to the 5.2 inch floppy drive. Yeah, I think she's dead. It's not a super elegant solution to writing old floppy disks, but it opens up a bunch more testing I can do with my 286, which might not be able to boot from these newer floppies. Using a boot floppy, you can also boot the latest version of DSL Linux on this computer. I can't get this to install, but it's a much more advanced GUI than basic Linux. Basic Linux also ships with a GUI. It's really just a way of running commands, but I like it. Surplus Gizmos is just too close to where I live. I could not help but pick up this oddity. This old space ball is a serial mouse. Not exactly common in 2021, but actually not super hard to make work in Linux. Simply plug it into a serial to USB and run this command. This will make the space ball show up as a joystick. Using a tool like QJoyPad, you can program its behavior. This is actually pretty cool. You can twist the ball in any direction, you can push the ball in any direction, and you can pull up and down on it. I can't say I'm switching anytime soon, but I could see how this would be fun for some games. Thanks for watching. Bye.